be one. All right. I want to welcome everyone to Nancy's Creek United Methodist Church again today. It's another beautiful day. Uh, we had a marvelous time yesterday swimming and eating and uh, enjoying ourselves. Uh, I'd like to welcome all the ones on the pews, and uh, I want to welcome all the ones that are online watching us. Uh, God just continues to bless us. The title of the sermon today is going to be Talking Your Faith. The spoken word is powerful. If you would learn that if you speak the word of God, it can change things. He said his word would not return unto him void, but accomplish those things that it was set forth to do. And you're a very vessel to be able to speak those words. So talking your faith. Let's start with prayer today. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever and ever. Amen. Scholar, will you give us our scripture, please, sir? Chapter 55. For as the rain cometh down, and the snow from heaven, and returneth not thither, but watereth the earth, and maketh it bring forth and bud, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. For ye shall go out with joy, and be led forth with peace. The mountains and the hills shall break forth before you into singing, and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Instead of the thorn shall come up the fir tree, and instead of the briar shall come up the myrtle tree. And it shall be to the Lord for a name, for an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off lasting sign that shall not be caught, cut off. Talk in your faith. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things that are not seen. So we need to speak our hope and it turns into faith. As we speak, we have to believe and speak, and we can speak to anything. We can speak to sickness. We can speak to finances. We can speak to a car that's out of gas and have it drive all the way to Gadsden and back. And I've seen that happen uh, in my own family. God, it may be a small miracle to some, but a miracle's a miracle. I don't care. I mean, you know. To see God's word manifest in your life is a powerful thing. You know, there's people here with us today and people who are watching online uh, and around the world that are going through storms in their life. The wind of tragedy has cursed their dreams. The waves of sorrow has suffered and drowned their hope, their hope about their future. You're deeply concerned about the direction of America. And after watching the debate the other night, I'm even more concerned than I've ever been. Their right of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness are being destroyed in our country today. And all your rights are going in the wrong direction. But what we need is a new beginning in our life. From the pages of God's word, I'm going to bring you a message today of experiencing a new beginning in your life if you're willing to stop being pushed by your problems 
and start being led by your dreams. You can experience a new beginning in your marriage or your business. Even a financial breakthrough could happen as early as tomorrow. It could happen today if you're willing to speak the word of God. You can experience a new beginning in physical health. Sickness and disease will be broken and be cursed and have to concede to the Word of God because the Word of God is more powerful than anything there is above, below, or even with us today. The Word of God is powerful. It can break emotional fears in our life. Some of you have problems of resisting over things and you give in. But the Word of God says stand tall on the Word of God. When Jesus was out there and Peter said bid me to come and Jesus said come on, the only thing that Peter had to stand on was the Word of God. And that is powerful. When you say, well, Pastor, that was Jesus. That same spirit that brought Jesus back from the dead is the same spirit that lives on the inside of you if you're a child of the living God. Power in the word. You know, when you speak the word of God, things happen. The Bible-based proclamation that will remove mountains, it seemed improbable that it would be able to do that, but the Word of God said it would, and if He said it, that settled it. It don't matter whether we believe it or not. I used to say, if God said it, I believe it, and that settled it, but that ain't right. If God said it, it's true, I don't care whether I believe it or not. The Word of God is powerful. Please hear this, all lives matter. Amen. Isaiah 55, 10. For as the rain comes down and the snow from heaven, and, and it does not return there, but it waters the earth, and makes it bring forth and bud, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So shall the word be that goes forth from your mouth. Let me say that again. So shall my word be that goes forth from your mouth. In other words, when you speak the word, you plant a seed. The power of God takes that seed just like one that's in the ground and you don't know how it grows. All you know is if you plant it, it comes up. That same seed is the same type thing it happens when you Speak the word. That's why when we call ourselves sick and we say, oh, well, you know, if I tell you I'm well, I'm lying. What does the word of God say? I'm going through something, but bless God, I'm making it to the other end. I mean, I may be in a battle, but I'm victorious because of Jesus Christ and the things that he's done in my life. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Look at the rest of this verse. It shall not return to me void, and it shall accomplish what I please, and it shall prosper in the thing for which I sent it. Hallelujah. The word of God for the people of God is a powerful, powerful thing. I've got that underlined in my Bible because I want you to know the Word of God is, is true. Speaking the Word of faith.
talking your faith, believing in your God, seeing what's taking place in your life. The Word of God has the power to absolutely change everything in your life, everything around you, everything you touch, everything you walk through. The Word of God can do it. And it's because that Jesus Christ gave his life and gave his blood. Did you know that John was the first one to call Jesus Christ the Word? In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The power of the Word, and we talk trash all the time. Father, I thank you for the Word of God and for the power that you have given to the bride of Christ to be victorious in this land and in this world. And we feel so bad because things are going wrong, but what do we need to do to correct that path? We need to pray, but we need to speak the word only. We need to climb to the top of the mountain. Examples of speaking the words of faith are all through the Bible. If the process of faith can be likened unto climbing a mountain, reaching the top of the mountain, and seeing the breakthrough view through all directions as we stand at the top of the mountain and view what's going on around us in our lives. We don't need to gossip and complain. We need to take the word of God and change things. Seeing the breakthrough. Too many believers on many occasions stop halfway up the mountain. They're not willing to go all the way or they don't think they can make it. But God said we can make it. God said he would be with us always even to the ends of the earth. And if God be for you, who can be against you? The word of God, the power of God, the blood sacrifice that Jesus made to pay the price. When Jesus was on the cross, he said, it is finished. That mountain. Matter of fact, the Bible said it's not necessarily to climb the mountain, but to speak to the mountain. Be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea. And it has to go. That's what the word of God said. That ain't what I said. That's what the Bible said. The word of God said it. He said it would have to go. And when you speak those things, what are you speaking to? It's not necessarily a mountain. It's a problem in your life. It's something, it's a sickness in your life. It's a, a financial problem in your life. It's something that you're dealing with that, that's a mountain to you. He said, speak to it. You know, I use old Abraham a lot, but that's a powerful, that's a powerful miracle that took place in the Bible. Take it to the top of the mountain, the power of God, your life by the spoken word of God. Listen to this hero of faith as, as a power that he proclaims. And Abraham was climbing the mountain with Isaac. And he spoke the words of faith to a servant. And he said, stay here. We will return. We will be back. God had something for him to do. So as he got up on the top of the mountain and he was up there and everything was taking place and, you know, he had to get the altar, he had to prepare the wood, he had to get everything ready. And Isaac was looking around and said, I see the altar, I see the wood, but, but where is the sacrifice? Can you imagine your father telling you that all of a sudden that you are going to be the sacrifice. And as he lays you up on the wood and he draws back his knife to thrust into you to take your life or make it as a sacrifice. And the angels 
of heaven came down and put a ram in the bushes and tied that ram up so it couldn't move. And when Abraham drew his hand up to take his boy's life, he saw the sacrifice that God had provided for him. The ram. God will always supply your need according to your riches in glory by Christ Jesus. God doesn't go back on his word. And we will come back to you is what he said. We, we too. Arnold Schwarzenegger said it like this. He said, I'll be back. <laughs> Abraham spoke the word of God to his servant, and God fulfilled the word. God said, let it be, and it was. God said, let there be light. Light being light was. God said, let there be firmament, and, and there was firmament. There was ground and grass, and he flung the stars in the sky, and there was Seven seas, seven seas. The power, the perfect manner of God, seven seas. That's what God has for us. That is the, the number of completion. And he created us. He created man and he created woman from man. And Abraham was talking to God, and God told him, said, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to get you a woman, and she'll be able to cook for you. She'll take care of you, and she'll drive you everywhere you need to go. She'll pay the house payment. She'll cook for you. She'll do everything for you. Adam said, what's that going to cost me? He said, an arm and a leg. <laughs> he said, well, what can I get for a rib? And the rest is history. Hallelujah. The spoken word of God. The powerful word of God. Jesus taught his disciples how to speak the word. You are to say to this mountain. Speak to this mountain. Be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea. The mountain is just an area of difficulty in our life. It could be cancer. I remember speaking in my life several times what God was doing in my life, and I continued to speak to those things that are not as though they were, so they could be. You find that in Romans. Amen. The word of faith used by Paul in Romans 10, 8, the word is near you. It's even in your mouth. Why do we not speak to things? Why do we not talk to the things that bother us instead of just sitting around and complaining about everything in our life? God wants us to know we have power over these things if we'll learn the word of God and learn to speak to those things. You'll have victory over defeat, success over failure. It it depends exactly on the words that come out of your mouth based on the faith that you have in God's word. If you desire enough and speak the word, you'll see God work in your life in a mighty way. You're not going to get anything until you ask for it. You get nothing until you ask for it. The Bible said ask. Seek, knock. You know, I've knocked on several things, and it took a while sometimes for things to open up, but God has never failed me yet. Amen. The Bible says, give us this day our daily bread. This is the power of the word of God. This is what is in one sentence. You're proclaiming the release 
and the authority of the living God to battle your battles for you, to fight the fight for you. It don't matter if it's your health, if it's a crisis, or whether it's your business or your future, your emotions, every aspect of your life God has for you because he loves you. The proclamation makes barriers turn into blessings. The proclamation releases the authority of God Almighty to crush your adversary. The devil may go around like a roaring lion seeking who he may devour, but God goes around inside you waiting for you to open your mouth. There's miracles in your mouth. And it needs to be turned loose, especially the way our country is today. Christian people need to start speaking to the mountain. Based upon the word of God and you talk to it. One nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. What do you want? Are you willing to... Ask God for it. Are you willing to speak the word to it and about it and around it and see a change take place in America today in our lives? Dear God, would you do something sometime to somebody? That's the way a lot of Christians pray today. But that's not a prayer. That's not even an intelligent wish. Make your position specific and speak to the problem specifically that God can act and move on that particular item in your life. God wants you to know that you need to have specificity. That's a good word. I learned that in college. <laughs> you need to say who, what, when, where, why, how, and let God move in your life. Get it together, base it on the Word of God. If you don't use the Word of God to base your speaking, your word, then it's your word. But if you speak the Word of God, he said, My words shall not return unto me void, but shall accomplish those things which I set forth for them to do. Isn't God good? Hallelujah. I love the Word of God. It's powerful. The Word of God is, <laughs> whoa, it'll change your life if you can get in it and get a hold of it and start using it for your benefit. Because when you use it for your benefit, it benefits God because you're a child of God and you're doing just like Jesus did as he walked around and spoke the word. You know, old Moses, I use him a lot too. Old Moses, he, God told him to go over there and tell Pharaoh to let him go. And Pharaoh had his rod. He, he had his shepherd's stick. And God turned it into a rod. And that rod went with him. And everything that God had from him from that point on, the rod helped him perform the miracles. This is our rod today. It's here for us. God gave it to us. His word, his living, it's powerful. It's always here. And all you have to do is study to show yourself to prove. God gives you the victory in your life if you're willing to speak to it. I'm tired of listening to the fake news garbage that I'm listening to occasionally because it comes on when I'm listening to something else. But Proverbs 24, 16 says, For a just man falls seven times. But listen to this. He gets up every time. 
And on the eighth time is where the miracle took place. What does that say? Don't give up on your dream. Don't stop halfway up the mountain. If God be for you. I know y'all y'all can say that with me. If God be for me. Who can be against me? God said to Moses, what is this in your hand? He said, it's a rod. God said, throw it down. It turned into a snake. God said, pick it up. I, I, I may have not even been there right then. I mean, I left. How many of you know if you pick up a snake by its tail, it's liable to bite you? God told him to pick that snake up by the tail, and he picked it up, and immediately it turned back into a rod. And the magicians that were there in Pharaoh's court said, well, we can do that, so they throw their rods down. Two snakes crawling around, and the people saying, you ain't showed us nothing, Moses. Can you imagine the Pharaoh laughing? And then God, in the snake of Moses, ate the other two up, and everything got quiet. He used that rod for all of the plagues and everything, trying to get Pharaoh to release God's people. God said, tell him, let my people go. Every time that he needed to do anything, God told him, use your rod. When they got to the Red Sea, Moses raised his rod up over the sea and it divided. Moses' rod was where God had put the power. Now today, God took this and gave us the rod, but he didn't mean for it to stay a rod out on the outside. He meant for this rod to turn on something on the inside. Use the stick that God gave you and change the situation that you're in. It's all in your mouth and we need to talk our faith. We need to speak the word of God. We need to see the power of God work in our life. God said no weapon formed against you shall be able to prosper. If anyone love me and will keep my word, my father will love him. Proclaiming the word of God, whosoever shall say, shall speak to the source of the problem, God said, I will change it. You must talk to it. Job 22, 28, and you shall decree a thing, and it will establish for you. In other words, it'll set it up for you so that God can take that word and work it in your life. Somebody say, work it. Work, work, work. work it in your life. God has a, a guidance, a divine proclamation that he has for you. And he wants you to take that and speak it so that he can change things. As long as you talk sickness and disease and defeat and poverty, that's all you're going to get. With the tongue, it's the pen that writes the future that you have. So when you speak defeat, you reap defeat. If you speak victory, you reap victory. Faith has no distance because when God's proclamation is boldly spoken in faith, it can go anywhere to change anything that God wants it to change. In the authority of Jesus' name, a proclamation of faith is something that we live with today. I want us to do a proclamation So let me read this proclamation to you, and if you agree with it, when I finish, say amen. Heavenly Father, 
in the authority of Jesus' name, we come before the throne of God to make this proclamation for the United States of America. Blessed be the name of God forever and ever, for wisdom and might are his. He changes the times and the seasons. He removes kings and raises up kings. Let all of the earth fear the Lord. Let all inhabitants of the world stand in awe of the living God. The Lord bring his counsel of nations and make this nation who we as people serve and love God righteous. Make America righteous in the things of God, righteous and ex excel in this nation and sin be reproached in any of the people who try to stand against the power of Almighty God. God arise and let the enemies of America be scattered abroad in the name of Jesus. Can the church say amen? Amen. 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 Hallelujah. And to God be the glory. Who all wants to be included in the closing prayer? Father, I just thank you and praise you for this another day. You're God, you're